good morning, Christ Central. Um, and uh, good morning, anybody who's tuning in later. Um, I'm Richard, and this morning I'm going to be taking you through 2 Corinthians 6, 14 to 18. So I'm going to start with a prayer. Lord, I pray that you will be with us this morning and you will speak to us this morning through your word and that you will bring us insights that help us understand you better and get close to you. Amen. And the passage goes like this. It is, do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Belial? What does an unbeliever have in common with a believer? What argument is there between, what agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will live with them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Um, I first met this passage when at university, when it was wheeled out to advise us young and hormone-filled Christians that dating people who weren't Christians um, wasn't a very good idea. Um, And when I started preparing this devotion, I thought, hmm, gosh, what on earth am I going to say to this group about it? Um, Firstly, given that very few of us are now on the dating scene. Um, So I looked, I went to my commentaries to see if they could help me. So I got out the big red commentary and looked up what it said about this passage. And the big red commentary told me that Bilal is a Jewish name for Satan and that this is quite an unusual passage because what happens is it strings together lots of allusions to Old Testament passages together in a way that Paul doesn't normally do. And it breaks the flow of argument from the rest of the letter and it uses a vocabulary that Paul doesn't normally use. And this has got many scholars scratching their heads and wondering if it's a fragment from another letter, maybe not even by Paul, that has been got incorporated into 2 Corinthians. Now that's all very interesting, but it doesn't help with grasping what God might be saying us today through this passage. So I went online and I looked up some more commentaries which are available for free online and they all agreed that what Paul was getting at here um, was advising very strongly that it's a bad idea for Christians to marry people who aren't Christians and then they all took it a bit further and said it wasn't a good idea to associate too freely with anyone who wasn't a Christian. Um, Now these commentaries are all free because they were written in the 18th and 19th centuries. And some of their advice seems quite quaint now. And I'm going to read you in full Barnes Notes on the Bible. And he's talking about this idea of not being too closely associated with non-Christians. And um, he says, this applies, of course, to the theatre, the circus, the ballroom, and to large and splendid parties of pleasure. We are not to associate with idolaters in their idolatry, nor with the licentious in their licentiousness, nor with the infidel in his infidelity, 
nor with the pride, proud in their pride, nor with the frivolous in their gaiety, nor with the friends of the theatre, the ballroom, or the circus in their attachment to these places and pursuits. Whatever our connection, we are to have them as neighbours, citizens, or members of our families. We are not to participate with them in those things. Thus far, all seems to be clear. There is the rule, and the rule is plain, for one whether it applies to marriage, or to business, or to religion, or to pleasure. So, there you go. Avoid circuses, theatres, and ballrooms. Um, I would say this sounds all quite comic now, but, you know, that's what we have been doing for these last few months. Um, but for very, very different reasons. Um, and I think it just goes to show what a different world we live in in the early 21st century and how Christian perspectives on these pa passages change. Because I think we do live in a, a very different world. And I feel I've got an awful lot in common with my non-Christian friends and colleagues. I don't see them as wicked. Um, many of them have lives that could be described as virtuous. But I think this passage does contain an important truth that we are not of this world. We are of God's kingdom. And that means, in a sense, we are set apart, a holy people, and we should not indulge in activities that are not pleasing to God. Jesus calls us to be like salt, and then goes on to say that if the salt loses its saltiness, it's useless and should be thrown out. Those of us who are married to people who are not yet Christian would probably tell us that this can be a hard part. There's key parts of your life that you and your partner don't share, and that can bring tension and disagreement about lots of important things like how to spend money, what you do with the time, how to bring up your children. Um, I think the tricky part of avoiding ungodly relationships and activities is to avoid getting muddled between avoiding things that genuinely are ungodly and avoid what our Christian culture is telling us. Good old Mr. Barnes was pretty convinced that the theatre was evil, but very few Christians would think that now. So I think the best thing is to go back to first principles. Which relationships or activities bring you closer to God and give you an opportunity to be salt and light and share God's grace. And which do you find draw you away from him? And individuals may come to very con different conclusions on some issues. Some may find that the ballet is a thing of wonder and beauty that builds them up and enriches their lives in a positive way. Others may find that muscular men in tights and very little else leads them down unhelpful ways of thinking. Um, it may over time change the cycling that was a helpful release from stress and a way with, of socialising can become an obsession that takes away you away from your family and church. Um, I think I'd like us to break into groups now and pray for each other. Um, it's a bit difficult now for us to be think about where we should be socialising, given that our social circles are so small. But let's pray about how we can be salt and light to our non-Christian friends and loved ones. And if we can, think about and pray about relationships and situations where we need to be careful because there is a pressure to compromise who we are and who we should be to fit in and be accepted.